27 to get this one going. Run up the middle. Armstrong! Jafar! To the fourth. He hands off, and it's another touchdown! It's Jafar Armstrong! is intercepted. Love go! Touchdown! Play pull. Touchdown. Right ground. Happy New Year! Dalen Hayes slings him out of bounds. Silver first in. Go down. Drew Tranquil. Welcome to Inside Notre Dame Football, brought to you by TireRack.com, along with former Irish quarterback Evan Sharpley, I'm Darren Pritchett. Game two on the Irish schedule, Notre Dame held on to beat Ball State 24-16 to improve to 2-0. Evan offensively, even though the Irish only scored 10 points in the second half, they made some adjustments to give themselves a better chance to have success. Well, Ball State had a great game plan early on. A lot of pressures early. Um, the offensive line needed to adjust in the second half. What you saw was more play action, more design runs for Brandon Winbush, um, which when executed, they had some success. What was your takeaway from the Irish defense's performance? I think once again, when you look at this Irish defense, uh, a bend but don't break mentality. Um, e even though Ball State had a great game plan to try to keep uh, uh, thwarting some of the pressures that Notre Dame was uh, throwing at them early on, you only give up 13 points. It's a pretty good game. You're a former Irish player. You've been through the moments where you have a big win over a rival, and then we in the media always talk about, well, there's a letdown sometimes. Was the letdown a part of the storyline today? Uh, certainly. Uh, you know, any anytime you, know, you play a rival like Michigan uh, a week prior, Notre Dame Stadium was packed. Uh, a little bit of a different environment today. To come out with a win is is – is big, uh, but certainly the letdown was obvious. The Irish win by eight. Let's go to the first half highlights. It's Notre Dame and Ball State, the first ever meeting. First offensive possession, the Irish got rolling. Jafar Armstrong up the middle for 42 yards to get inside the Ball State five-yard line. A couple of plays later, Armstrong scored his third touchdown of the year. Look at Alex Bars right here hedging off. Jafar Armstrong be able to get up uh, north and south and scores another touchdown. 7 nothing Irish, 13.06 to go in the first quarter. Ball State put together a 19-play, 85-yard drive. Morgan Hagee, a 25-yard field goal to cut the Irish lead down to 7-3. to three. Then Jerry Tillery with some pressure, and Tavon Coney finishes off Riley Neal. This front seven's been fantastic so far early in the year, these two games, and continue to pressure quarterbacks. The Irish back on offense. Brandon Wimbush stayed in the pocket and found Chase Claypool for a 23-yard reception on fourth down and eight. That set up a 43-yard field goal try by Justin Yoon that was no good, and the Irish had a 7-3 lead in the second quarter. Wimbush then to Armstrong down the right sideline for 23 yards to the Notre Dame 41, then Armstrong again for 38 yards to the Ball State 35. Yeah, the, the former high school receiver here it looked like the Notre Dame coaching staff saw something with this Ball State defense and able to take advantage of some soft coverage. But the Cardinals defense holds as Wimbush could not connect on fourth yeah, and eight. Not sure what happened right here. Obviously holding on to the ball a little bit too long. Looked like a little miscommunication between the two receivers. But the Irish defense got the ball back. A deflection by Nick Coleman and an interception by Jalen Elliott. He took the ball down to the Cardinal 31. Next play, Tony Jones Jr. 31-yard touchdown run. The Irish led 14 to three. Great job by the offensive line. Even though they weren't doing a great job protecting the quarterback, awesome on the ground here. Tony Jones breaks a couple of tackles and finds the end zone. So the Fighting Irish with 8:14 to go in the second led 14 to three. Ball State picks up three points off an Irish turnover. It was 14 to six. Notre Dame with 2:30 to go in the second quarter. That would be the halftime score. And Evan, here's a look at the first half stats. Let's look at third down conversions here for the Notre Dame offense. You know, if you're if you're looking at you look at turnovers, you look at third down uh, efficiency, and then you also look at red zone scoring. Notre Dame's offense wasn't able to get it done on that money down. Defensively, they did a pretty good job getting off the field. Got to be able to cash in on those money downs. Halftime score was Notre Dame 14 and Ball State 6. We'll take a look at the second half highlights coming up in just a moment. This is Inside Notre Dame Football brought to you by TireRack.com. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by 
TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame football is also brought to you by Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by TireRack.com. I'm Darren Pritchett, along with former Irish quarterback Evan Sharpley. Notre Dame led 14-6 at halftime. Let's take a look at the second half highlights as the Irish and the Cardinals continue their matchup at Notre Dame Stadium. Ball State, opening drive of the third quarter. Riley Neal under pressure and is picked off by Jalen Elliott. Man, what a great job here by Drew Tranquil providing the pressure. Jalen Elliott breaks on the football. Obvious, obviously a great start to the second half. Sets up this Irish offense with good, some good field position. Then a changeup offensively. Brandon Wimbush, his first design run of the afternoon. He picks up nine yards, just shy of the first down marker. Then play action. Wimbush rolling to his right finds Miles Boykin for 14 yeah, yards we, to the Ball State 30. We mentioned the shift here in play call start the second half. Some more design runs, more play action, getting Brandon Wimbush on the move and making some throws. And Tony Jones Jr. scored from one yard out. 10.37 to go third quarter. Notre Dame 21, Ball State 6. Then Wimbush finds Boykin once again, this time for 18 yards to the Ball State 44. Once again, more play action. You're able to freeze that second line defense. Also make sure that you're, you're not allowing that, the edge rushers to get upfield. Great completion here. The Irish pushed the lead to 18 points as Yoon connected a 46-yard field goal. 2-1 to go third quarter, Notre Dame 24, Ball State 6. We now move to the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. Ball State puts together a 13-play drive. Riley Neal to Nolan Given, a 10-yard touchdown strike. And with 12.01 to go in the fourth quarter, it was Notre Dame 24, Ball State 13. Wimbush under pressure, rolling to his right. Down the right sideline, looking for Claypool. He's intercepted for a third time today. And yeah, once you eject out of the pocket here, you're looking for the easiest completion. It looked like he was working to the second level. Probably should have picked up the first down right at the sticks there. Not a great throw. But no harm done, as Hagee misses from 46 yards out. The lead was still 11. Later on in the fourth quarter, Hagee connects from 46 yards, and it's 24 to 16 with 1.30 to go. Ball State goes for the onside kick, and Drew Tranquil with the good hands takes care of the kickoff, takes a hit, and that secures Notre Dame's 24-16 victory over the Ball State Cardinals. Notre Dame a 2-0 football team. And as we look at the final stats, 414 yards of total offense for Notre Dame. Yeah, Ball State did a great job of possessing the football. Notre Dame's defense was on the field for a long time. Again, you look at third down conversion rates on both sides. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty good night for the Irish defense offensively. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was a lack of execution. You had opportunities to make plays, just couldn't cash in. Final score, Notre Dame 24 and Ball State 16. This is Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by TireRack.com. We are in Coach Kelly's office in the Notre Dame locker room right after Notre Dame's victory over Ball State. You told this team all week that this would not be an easy game, that it was not easy to win in college football. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not surprised that Ball State came out and played as well as they did. Your team had to make big plays to win this game. We did. We had to come up with two interceptions. You know, a couple of stops. Uh, defensively, I thought we had to play pretty good, which we did. I mean, you know, obviously uh, we'd like a play back here or there, but uh, we just didn't keep up with the standards that we've set here in our program. And, uh, you know, give credit to Ball State too, though. I mean, they played really well. I, I thought Riley Neal was a heck of a quarterback, and he showed me that he is and made some great plays, kept plays alive. And uh, I think defensively was the big surprise, how effective they were. Um, we were. We were not very effective. In, in a lot of things that we wanted to do offensively. You just spoke to this team. You began your speech by saying, hey, we didn't play up to our level, and that is my fault. It's the coach's fault. And you reiterated that and told them to enjoy it, but you also told them they've got to be better next week. Well, i got to prepare them better. Obviously, that uh, when you come out and you don't play at the same level that you played the week before, that falls a lot on coaching. So, But uh, the players have to come up with an emotional kind of uh, charge, too. You know, this game is not, it's not chess. You know, you've got to have... Um, you know, some emotional, you know, charge in you when you go out and play. And, and I don't know if we had that same charge. And so, again, 
making sure that we respect all of our opponents that we play them, that, you know, that falls on me too. Turnovers, some struggles in the kicking game, put your defense in a number of tough positions again. And they came through again, not giving up a touchdown until the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think the kicking game really concerned me that much as much as, um, you know, we just were ineffective early on finishing off drives. I mean, we had, you know, a drop ball here or we didn't have a, you know, a clean, you know, reception here or, you know, we didn't pick somebody up. It, it was really not finishing off drives in the first half. And, you know, as I told them, that kept Ball State, you know, confident and kept them around. And part of that was I know you hoped and expected your offensive line to take control of the game more than they did. That made Brandon throw more and he ended up with a career-high 297 yards, but he did have the three picks. Yeah, and, you know, I think I said, you know, earlier that, uh, you know, we're, we're throwing some some different routes at him now, working against some combination coverages that we stayed away from last year. And, you know, there's some growing pains in there that uh, he's got to get better at, and we've got to get, you know, him coached up on some of those things as well. Miles Boykin, a big game, six catches, 119 yards. Well, he's a big target, you know, and we got to get him the football after last week going and getting that one touch. And, uh, you know, obviously he's a guy that can make big plays. And you saw him, he's smooth, he's got a great catching radius. So getting him the football is important. The most important drive in this game may have been the first one. You came out with two big plays to set up an early score. Where did that go, right? I mean, you know, we looked pretty good coming out of the gates and then, you know, we just couldn't sustain things. Again, a lot of that's going to start on the offensive line. And we, you know, for the credit that they got in week one, they should get a lot of the um, the concern in week two. We got to go back to the drawing board, take a look at some things, and uh, we got to clean some things up. You expected better safety play this year, and you are getting it. Mm -hmm. Jalen Elliott gets the yeah. game ball, two picks, both of which you turned into touchdowns. Yeah, we did. I mean, I think our defense was opportunistic. Um, you know, there was a little bit of a bend, don't break uh, going on there. Uh, I think, you know, really, if you look at it, they've had one drive where we probably didn't play as physical as we liked. Um, but all in all, I think our defense is, uh, is feeling pretty good about themselves. You told the team to enjoy it, come back, be ready to work. You're playing the same basic defensive yeah. scheme next week, but with SEC talent. Yeah, they're they're not uh, they're not Mid American Conference players, and I love Mid American Conference players, especially if they play like that. Uh, but they're SEC players, and and this is going to be a challenge. We're going to have to uh, coach them better. Uh, we're going to have to prepare better, and we're going to have to play better. This is Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by TireRack.com. Along with former Irish quarterback Evan Sharpley, I'm Darren Pritchett. Notre Dame over Ball State by a score of 24 to 16. The Irish defense today, as you mentioned, bent, but didn't break a whole lot today. They created a couple of turnovers, and Jalen Elliott came up with two interceptions. That's important because throughout the entire season last year, the Irish safeties did not come up with one interception. Elliott had two today. Yeah, this group, I think, is trending up, and this is a defense this year that's going to be able to keep Notre Dame in every football game. You look at this play right here, Jalen Elliott had a, had a great, you know, two interceptions today. The pressure was evident here from the front seven. Anytime you can put pressure on a opposing quarterback, man, it, it, it sure helps out that back end. We've got athleticism in Jalen Elliott, Alohi Gilman on the backside, guys coming up and making great plays. Awesome to see for this back end. Well, once again, the Irish did a pretty good job today of getting pressure on Riley Neal. Now, that doesn't mean they got a lot of sacks today, but just because you're putting pressure on the quarterback doesn't mean you just want a sack. If you can just affect the quarterback and his timing, that's an effective sure. you, play. You, you look back to last week against Michigan as well. Um, there weren't a lot of big sack numbers. Pressure numbers weren't super high. Quarterback hurries are going to be a big number for, for this group, this front seven, both linebackers. Anytime you can put some pressure on the quarterback with the front four guys, you're going to help out your corners and your safeties quite a bit. And that's what it looks like this defense is going to be able to do each week. Let's turn our attention to the Irish offense. Jafar Armstrong had an Another very solid day today for the Irish. The former wide receiver learning the running back position on the fly. 13 carries for 66 yards and a touchdown. I know the coaching staff has talked about he still runs a little high, doesn't get his right. pads down. But this is a really difficult transition from wide receiver to running back. Yeah, and he, he's done a great job picking it up. He offers some position versatility. Uh, Brian Kelly said that he's as close to a guy like Theo Riddick that he's had um, since Theo left. So to be able to stretch the defense here uh, vertically, running the ball north and south, they lined him up in the slot several times, picked up some big chunk plays. Um, for this offense right now, he just does quite a bit um, and, and able to spread out both running and throwing. 
Now has three touchdowns on the ground this season. Also, in the passing game, was targeted three times, caught all three passes for 61 yards. So a very effective day for Armstrong, 127 yards of total offense. Notre Dame defeats Ball State by a score of 24 to 16. Stick around, more inside Notre Dame football to come, presented by TireRack.com. I started playing football when I was about four years old. I played running back at this time too, so I wasn't a, I wasn't a defensive guy. I was, I was a guy that wanted to score a touchdown. My dad was one of the coaches, so just having him there all the time in my practices and having my mom there, it was just it was just fun. It was all fun and games. Uh, my first visit to Notre Dame was over the summer, and um, the visit was was awesome. I mean, when I when I first stepped in the building, I knew it was it was a special place. I uh, never met a group of people that that cared so much about someone they never knew, and I knew that. Once I felt that feeling that this had to be this place for me, I mean, having an opportunity to come to a, a prestigious school like this, you know, it was an opportunity that me and my family knew we couldn't pass up on. I'm, I'm excited to see all the fans out there supporting us, you know, because without them, you know, it, it wouldn't be as much fun. So to be able to see the fans and and just be in that mode, I just can't wait to play, you know. I'm just I'm just focused and just just having that support is just a great feeling to just know that when you go out there, you can you can make a lot of people happy. Time for the Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats Play of the Week. Four receivers, the back Huntley next to the quarterback. He fires, it's intercepted under the deflection. Jalen Elliott from his safety position. Second down, here is Neal. Rolling, intercepted. Number two for Jalen Elliott. Out of bounds at the 45 yard line. It's time for the Tire Rack Question of the Week. This week's question comes to us from Carol from Delaware. She asks, which freshmen have made the most progress since the Blue Goal game? I would probably say Jason Adiamola. You know, for him to get in as a defensive tackle um, where, you know, he wasn't a mid-year, I think he's done a really nice job. The Fighting Irish are 2-0. They're getting set to take on 2-0 Vanderbilt. The Commodores from the SEC beat Middle Tennessee State in their opener 35-7. And then they beat Nevada in Week 2 41-10. Kyle Shermer is the quarterback. He is the son of New York Giants head coach Pat Shermer. But this week I have a feeling, yeah, Vanderbilt's the opponent. But in practice for Notre Dame, it's going to be all about Notre Dame. Yeah, it's, it's going to be less about the opponent that's going to come in and, and, and making some of these changes that Brian Kelly highlighted and that we've talked about uh, offensively, making sure that everything's clicking on the offensive line. Um, defensively, it really, for me, is, is rinse and repeat. The game plan, that they've done a great job executing. Are there some plays that they want to make, continue to improve and, and tackling better? Um, but I thought that, that the defense has continued to execute at a high level. This is a championship defense right here. Uh, they've got a great attitude, um, uh, and I think that they're going to be able to keep Notre Dame in football games if the offense isn't playing as they expect. And if this was a letdown week, then I would have to think this team's going to be <laughs> extra motivated when Vanderbilt comes to Notre Dame Stadium next Saturday. Well, the Fighting Irish are 2-0. They beat Ball State today by a final score of 24-16. For Evan Sharpley, I'm Darren Pritchett. We thank you for joining us on Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by TireRack.com. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football 
is also brought to you by Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and SiriusXM.